Hey, Laura J here with Michael Seegers for episode 11 of the Michael and Laura show. Today, you have an incredible opportunity to learn about someone you can see in the frame that you may not be as well acquainted to as what you are with Michael and I, and that is beloved Saint Germain. So today, Michael is going to introduce you to one of the Ascended Masters who gifted us all with the Violet Flame. Thank you, Laura. I have to tell you, Saint Germain is one of my favorite people to talk about. He is a dear friend. And many of us have known him for such a long time, it is almost impossible to believe. Our history with St. Germain goes back at least 70,000 years. In what is today the Sahara Desert, it used to be a lush, lush tropical paradise and they had a golden age civilization. And St. Germain was the ruler of that civilization. And many of us were in embodiment at the time. And we knew him then and we have known him ever since. And it's only because we don't have access to the memories of our past lives that he comes to us today as somebody brand new again. So I'd like to reacquaint you with this dear friend. So we're going to start with an interesting note that comes from a gentleman by the name of Voltaire. Voltaire was a very prolific writer in France in the 1700s, very well known. Uh, somewhat of a historian, and in a letter that he wrote to Frederick II, and Frederick II was the king of Prussia at the time. Prussia doesn't exist as a country today. Uh, we see East Germany and West Germany in that neighborhood. Anyway, Voltaire, in a letter that he wrote to Frederick, referred to St. Germain as a man who never dies and who knows everything. St. Germain is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating personalities of recorded history. And this is what I really like about St. Germain is he is historically recent. It's not like talking about Jesus 2,000 years ago or Buddha 2,500 years ago or Krishna four or 5,000 years ago. We're talking about somebody who is historically recent, an ascended master who was well known and documented and easy to research. The activities of this illustrious master have been documented for more than a century, from 1710 to 1822, throughout the courts of Europe. To the peoples of many lands, Saint Germain was considered a citizen, for he spoke 12 languages with the fluency of a native. Now imagine that. Where do you find somebody who speaks 12 languages with the fluency of a native? Composing and improvising on the piano without music and playing the violin like an orchestra were but a few of the achievements that demonstrate the stunning genius of the wonder man of Europe. And there are stories about Saint Germain entertaining guests and he would take out his violin and then walk behind a screen that was dividing the room so that they couldn't see him and he would begin to play and the sound they would hear was the sound of a complete orchestra as if he had 40 instruments. To remove the flaws from precious gems was a simple task for the master alchemist. Neither was it beyond his ability to transmute base metals into gold according to a confidant in the court of Louis XV, Madame Pompadour, he possessed a miraculous elixir that could prolong life. Aside from the prodigious, St. Germain's strongest attribute is his devotion to the freedom and enlightenment of all mankind. His never ending service to life will stand as a tribute to this distinguished master for generations to come. In studies in alchemy, St. Germain conveys the knowledge of this sacred science that no man or woman should be without. You become the creator. You possess the inherent ability to transform your anxieties into happiness and your fears into love. So that is on the back cover of the book, Studies in Alchemy, which is where I began when I first got introduced 
to St. Germain in this lifetime. What we're looking at here is a drawing that was done. Actually, originally it was done as an engraving. Uh, the artist's name was uh, Thomas. The picture hangs in the museum in France known as the Louvre. And it shows Saint Germain as he was known at the time. This image was uh, produced by Manley Palmer Hall, who went to the Louvre back in the, oh, maybe the 1930s and produced this photograph. Manley Hall was a student of Saint Germain and produced a tremendous amount of work based on what he learned as a student. We have from Isabel Cooper Oakley, who was a theosophist in the late 1800s, early 1900s, her biography. It's also uh, been reprinted under the title, The Secret of Kings. And it tells what was known about St. Germain taken from historical records from the archives of uh, royal families who had original documents in their collections. It even contains a letter that was written by St. Germain, his handwriting, his signature. Uh, Manley Palmer Hall has a, a book that uh, was reproduced. I have a limited edition uh, in my collection of the actual music that was written by St. Germain. And after about 20 years of searching, I found uh, the music itself recorded. So I now have that uh, in my library as MP3 files. It's, it's wonderful classical music is written for violin and violoncello. Then we have the book that Saint Germain wrote, La Tres Saint Trinosophie, the Holy Trinosophia, that is his alchemical textbook, it was written in the 1700s. Again, uh, Manley Palmer Hall had to go to the Louvre in France and get permission to photograph the original book. And uh, they turned the pages for him and he photographed each page one by one. I have several copies of this. I have the original editions. They're 100 years old. Uh, gorgeous books with um, perfect reproductions of the actual text, including the ciphers and the secret codes in which the uh, parts of the text were written. So this is all evidence of the existence of this gentleman that many people today believe is just some disembodied spirit being channeled through psychics. It's not the case. Here we have an actual photograph. This was taken in the late 1800s in India. The lady in the center is Helen Blavatsky. And she is sitting there with three masters. This is Kathumi on the left. This is El Moria in the center. And this is the immortal Count St. Germain. So we followed him from when he was a friend of Louis the 14th, when he lived at Chambord Palace with Louis the 15th from the 1700s now into the late 1800s. So we're talking about being around for a couple of hundred years. And then we discover in 1930 or thereabouts, early 1930s, that a gentleman by the name of Guy Ballard was hiking at Mount Shasta, California and he met St. Germain there. And this is an image from that time. And St. Germain explained to Guy Ballard that uh, they had known each other for thousands of years and he gave Guy Ballard access to his past life memories so that they were able to uh, really share those experiences. And then he gave Guy Ballard the mission of publishing his teachings. So they created the St. Germain Foundation. They produced 20 extraordinary volumes with instruction in the form that we call dictations that were given by over 100 masters. 
plus thousands of supplementary text. And that's the whole body of literature that is published by the St. Germain Foundation. And then we have the image by Charles Sindelar. And this is a very, very extraordinary situation. Charles Sindelar was a world-renowned artist. He'd actually done paintings for a number of US presidents. Highly, highly skilled, very gifted artist. And he had a recurring dream in which Jesus appeared to him and it would happen night after night after night for more than a month. And finally, in a conversation with a friend, the friend said, well, why don't you paint him? And so Charles Sindler painted Jesus as he appeared to him in his light body. And we have a stunning image of that. And then a few years later, he met Guy Ballard. And St. Germain instructed him, he wanted him to do his portrait. And so Guy Ballard anchored the presence of the light body of St. Germain in his room and Charles Sindelar produced this painting. And those of us who are able to travel in our light body to the retreats of the masters on the third plane will tell you that this is exactly what he looks like. That is our beloved ascended master St. Germain in his light body. Now, he has an extraordinary book that he has produced for us. And this is how I found him. I think it was about 1984, a friend who had introduced me to the teachings of the Son of Masters in 1982, uh, asked me one day, have, have you read St. Germain? And I said, no, no, actually I haven't. Who is St. Germain? And he said, oh, you have to go to the world's biggest bookstore and get his book on alchemy. And so I did just that. And I discovered that this book is an instruction manual that will teach you the science of alchemy. And it is powerful and it's profound. And in chapter seven, Methods of Transfer, St. Germain requests that we do an experiment, that we actually perform an alchemical precipitation. And so I did just that, and I actually precipitated, I produced a solid physical object where previously there was nothing. I still have the object in my possession today. I was able to demonstrate with surprising precision, the science of alchemy. And it led me on a journey that here we are 40 years later, has transformed my life beyond what I had imagined would be possible. And over the years, I've discussed this book with many students of the masters. And quite surprisingly, when I asked the question, did you do the experiment? They all say, no, they never tried. And all I can say is, what a shame. <laughs> you have no idea what you missed. It's an extraordinary work. I've been through this book numerous times, probably read it 30 times or more. I study it. It's, it's just, there's so much depth to the material in there that you, you must review it and repeat it and repeat it. And Believe it or not, this was even before I found the violet flame. The violet flame is the gift that St. Germain brings to us. And we've already talked about that. We already produced videos about that. And when I go back into this book, I now have a greater understanding about when I see the word violet flame mentioned in there, I know what St. Germain is talking about. It truly is God's highest gift, of, uh, gift to the universe. We see here on the cover, and you don't see this on the new editions. You have the newer edition, Laura, which has all four of the alchemy books in one volume. You don't see the image of Aquarius, the water bearer. This is the constellation Aquarius. And 
the significance of that is that St. Germain is the master of the Aquarian age, which we have recently entered into. And so every 2,200 years or 2,150 or 60 years, we have a new age. We recently transitioned through the age of Pisces and we knew Jesus as the Piscean master. And now we're in the age of Aquarius. And for the next 2000 year cycle, St. Germain as the Aquarian master is here to take souls to the next level in their spiritual evolution. And it is by his extraordinary devotion and by the sacrifices that he made when he went to the Lords of Karma to receive a special permission to give us the vital flame that we actually have that gift. It was not available during the last 10,000 years. It was tremendously misused and abused on Atlantis and Atlantis was sunk. That was the flood of Noah. And that was just because the Lords of Karma had to put an end to what was going on. And so from that point in time until 1930, the only way you could use the vital flame was if you were an initiate of the masters and you were able to travel in your light body to the etheric planes and in the retreats of the masters, you could use the vital flame there. Having access to it on the physical plane is hundreds of times more powerful because you cannot transmute physical substance on the etheric plane with the vital flame. You have to bring the vital flame to the physical plane to transmute physical substance and physical karma. And that is the burden that we're all dealing with today is our physical karma. And being able to transmute that karma with the vital flame on the physical plane now and also having the dispensation of only being required to balance 51% of our karma to make our ascension means we can actually accomplish this in one lifetime, what we have not been able to accomplish in the last several hundred lifetimes. So what a blessing, what a gift, what a powerful friend we have in St. Germain. And it's been my pleasure to introduce him to you. Thank you, Laura. My absolute pleasure. And I hope that you who got to listen to this message have some questions that you would like us to speak into. So please do comment below, subscribe to the YouTube channel where you have seen this on either the Shambhala Temple of Light, where there is a wealth of resources for you to be able to take advantage of, or on my channel, Laura J.E. Hamilton. We very much look forward to sharing more content with you, introducing you to the teachers who came before and were able to ascend as we have a chance to do now too. So thank you, Michael, and have a phenomenal day, everyone. Thank you, Laura. I have discovered over the years that the more I do for St. Germain, the more he takes care of me. Yeah. That's just what happens. Nice. And, and some of it needs to be a surprise. Yeah. And I can tell you, St. Germain will blow you away with his surprises. 100% guaranteed all the time. He's lucky to have a friend like you too, Michael. I love him dearly. I know, you can tell. <laughs>